Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at weld design, and we're going to be continuing with our weld design series part two, looking at rectangular welds. So let's go ahead and kind of re uh, review what we talked about last time a little bit, right? We're going to be uh, doing our calculation in accordance with AISC specification chapter J. We're going to be util utilizing the Blodgett method, right, where we um, treat the weld as a line with no throat. So that allows us to use sort of our, our basic fundamentals of engineering for determining our stresses. So we can use our, you know, our P over A plus M over S, that sort of thing. And uh, we noted this last time, but just keep in mind, there is a slight difference between the 15th and the 16th edition um, on how the weld capacity is calculated. It, it ends up being the, the same uh, capacity, but it's just a little bit different in formatting uh, for how they calculate it. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then, you know, as always, CalcBook uh, allows you to evaluate all six degrees of freedom uh, for for this weld. So FX, FY, FZ out of the page there, and then moments about each axis as well as torsion. So let's take a look at our problem statement for today. All right, let's assume we have an HSS 8 by 4 by 3 8 column. It is uh, welded to a base plate with a fillet weld all around. Um, we're using E70 uh, electrode um, um, weld wire. And the loading is shown in the diagram to the right there. And we are going to be uh, determining the minimum fillet weld size required to resist the applied loading. So we have a uh, horizontal shear force, Fx, of 6.5 kips. And then we have a moment about the y-axis of 250 kip inch. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so let's go ahead and jump into our steel design. Um, we can use the 16th or the 15th edition, but we'll continue on using the 16th edition here. Uh, we'll go into our connection design, and we'll scroll down, and we'll select on our rectangular weld design and click Confirm. So our width of our weld is just going to be the width of the, uh, the HSS section. So we have, it's an 8 by 4, so 4 inches wide, 8 inches tall. And then we're going to leave this at a quarter inch weld, um, and then we'll come back and change it if we need to increase the size for our uh, capacity. And then we'll go ahead and go to our demand. Uh, we're not going to use any load combinations. We're going to assume that this is already at the ultimate uh, strength. So our force in the x direction is going to be 6.5 kips. And our moment about the y is going to be 250 kip inch. All right, so we can see already we've got, we're overstressed by about 20%, but let's walk through the calculation and then we will uh, uh, adjust our, our input so that we meet the uh, capacity or meet the demand required. So let's look at our demand on this rectangular weld. Look at our section properties, right? We just calculate the total length of the weld, just the perimeter. We calculate our section modulus about the x-axis, our section modulus about the y-axis, and then our torsional constant of the weld. Then we go through and check the weld stress due to each load component, right? So in the x direction, we just have the weld divided by the total length, gives us 0.27 kips per inch. Nothing in the y direction, nothing in the z direction. We have no moment about the x, and then we have a moment about the y. So we do our my over s, which is going to be 250 kip inch divided by 37.33. Gives us 6.7 kips per inch. Then we want to check uh, our moments uh, about the uh, our torsion, excuse me, um, but we don't have any torsion. If we did, we would be checking the horizontal component component against the sort of the top and bottom welds, and then the vertical component against the left and right welds uh, for adding up later. But since we do not have any torsion, we do not have to worry about this. So then we want to combine our uh, different components. So we are going to first start with our sort of in-plane direction uh, forces, which is going to be our FX and FY. And then if we had torsion, we would add those components into the, to that, those welds or into that demand. So we just have our square root sum of the squares of just the 0.27. So we just have 0.27 kips per inch in the in-plane direction. And the out-of-plane direction, the only component that we have here is due to the moment about the y-axis, and that's 6.7 kips per inch. And then we combine those for the total shear uh, per inch of weld is going to be a total of 6.7 kips per inch. There's probably a little bit of rounding in there because of this 0.27 is so small. And then for the capacity side, right, look at the capacity of the weld. Right, We did this last time, just the effective area. We take our weld, uh, our fillet weld size, and divide that by square root of 2 our nominal stress. We talked about this KDS factor, right? This is the difference uh, between uh, 16th and 15th. Um, this would account for any theta, right? Any, uh, any uh, you know, direction um, from the axis of the weld. But for us, we're not going to consider that. So we just leave that as one. 
calculate the nominal shear strength and then our design shear strength. And we have a, a capacity of 5.57 kips per inch, which is not quite enough. So we'll go back to our capacity. We can go up a 16th to a 5 16th weld. And that looks like it just works with a D, uh, demand to capacity ratio of 0 0.96. So that is part two in our weld design series, looking at rectangular welds in CalcBook. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you are still watching this video, we'd love to offer you a 25% discount on your first month's subscription of CalcBook by using the discount code YTCB2024. You can go ahead and go to our website and download a free trial um, and then use that discount code on your first month's subscription. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.